Hey everyone, I'm Tyler and welcome to the channel. Today we are going to be making this boot pan using epoxy, river rock, and a little bit of wood. This was a really fun project, experimental to a certain degree, and I definitely have some lessons learned that I will be taking into future projects where I might be using a combination of epoxy and river rock like this. To thank you guys for being big fans of the channel, Carolina and I are going to be giving away three pairs of boots to three lucky winners. You can find out more about that in the link in the description below, and I'll talk about that a little bit more at the end of the video. This video has been brought to us by Carolina Shoe and Total Boat. You can find more about these great companies using the links down in the description below. So here are a couple pieces of red oak that I'm going to be using for this project. And there's a few problems that you see right off the bat. Obviously, we have this big crack right here. And you're seeing some pretty drastic movement because I think the pith of the tree was right over here somewhere in probably the next bore. So we're going to split this down the middle right here. And then we can joint and plane these two sides into some workable lumber. And same thing on the bottom board. We got a knot right here and we got the pith of the tree right here. So I'm going to split this bad boy right here, cut that out to prevent any of that crazy movement, and we'll get some workable lumber on either side. First step in the process was to go over to the bandsaw to do the rough resawing before moving over to the jointer and planer. The debate will be forever raging if it's better to use the table saw or the bandsaw for a process like this, but really when you have twisted boards, the bandsaw is better as there is way less of a kickback opportunity because the table saw can grab boards so fast and throw them back at you, and the bandsaw removes less material. Once we had done that rough resawing, I moved over to the jointer to joint two faces. This is my new helical head jointer. And this thing is absolutely magical. It saves so much time sanding since it has those sharp carbide tips. Once I had one face and a side squared up over at the jointer, it was back over to the bandsaw to do some resawing simply so that I didn't have to remove so much material once I was over at the planer. And then it was over to the planer to make that last surface parallel to the surface that we jointed over on the jointer. Now this is the upgraded helical head. I made a video about that. You can find that up in the video cards. And I will say I was a little bit worried about the current draw putting this new planer head in but I haven't had an issue and I have ran a lot of material through this machine since the upgrade. And again, with those sharp carbide tips, it cuts down on an immense amount of sanding. At this point, our material prep is complete and it's time to saw down the boards that we need to the proper dimensions. Over at the table saw, I am cutting down that last side that has been touched by the joint room planer to a dimension needed to make a flat bottom panel for this boot pan and one and a half inches tall for the sides. The first step in the assembly process will be to glue up that quarter inch flat panel bottom. I am using some Type Bond 3, which is a waterproof glue. Once that panel had dried up appropriately, it was back over to the table saw to cut it down to its final dimension, and I used the miter sled on the table saw, since this was too wide for my miter saw, to cross cut it down to its proper length. The bottom panel is now complete and it is time to focus our attention onto the sides that are going to wrap this panel. Again, these are half inch thick and one and a half inches tall and I'm going to be cutting a 45 degree miter on either side. Once the sideboards are cut down to their proper length, 
It is back over to the table saw where I will move the fence several times to cut a dado in all those sideboards which will accept that flat bottom panel that we glued up earlier. This is by no means a one and done process. Moving that fence several times to get the exact width of that dado is how you're going to have to go about doing it. Once the data was dialed in, I cut it on all of the pieces and it was time to wrap the panel board. I sanded off any hairs that might interfere with the connection and then used a combination of Tight Bond 3 and some Tight Bond Fast Acting Adhesive to quickly clamp the miter in place. I made sure not to add glue in the groove, only on the 45 degree miters. And I used a couple of these handy spring clamps to make sure I had a tight miter. You can find a link to these down in the description below. They are super handy to have and only cost a couple bucks, certainly taking your projects that have miters to the next level. Hey this looks like a great spot to mention the new swag. While you're down there in the description, hammer that link to the new merch and check out that sweet hat on hat logo and the new shirts which are super comfortable and soft. Would love to see you all repping the DIY Tyler Nation. The end grain to end grain glue up of a miter is not very strong so it's always good to add a little bit of reinforcement. In this case I'm going to be using dowels which has turned into one of my favorite ways of doing this reinforcement. It is a very easy method but at the same time looks very good. At this point, the assembly of the tray is complete and it's time to add a few finishing touches. The first was a itty bitty round over using my cordless trim router, both on the inside and the outside of the sides. And then I came back with a pole saw and cut off the dowels that were sticking out and then ran over the entire thing with 220 grit sandpaper with my random orbit sander. I made sure to get all of the dowels perfectly flush and then hit any areas that I couldn't get into with the trim router bit. Like most of the oak projects in our house, I finish this boot pan with Rust-Oleum Ultimate Polyurethane with a couple percent tint of General Finish's water base stain. As you can see as I spray, it tans the wood just a little bit and that is the water base stain mixed into the top coat. Tinting your top coat is a very easy way of adding a little bit of color to your project. And now moving on to the exciting step of pouring the epoxy. This epoxy was given to me by Total Boat, who is a sponsor of today's video, and this is a gallon kit of their high performance epoxy. This has the pump kit, which I'm not going to necessarily need as I'm going to be pouring quite a bit. We also got some of the black diamond pigment that Total Boat carries, and we decided on a color to add to the epoxy to make it look a little bit like water underneath the rock. I did a little bit of math to see how much epoxy I would need for a 3 8 inch layer over the entire tray. The epoxy is mixed up in a 2 to 1 ratio, which I did by using the marks on the side of the total boat cork cups that were supplied. I first added the resin, which is the two parts, and then the hardener, which is the one part, and mixed thoroughly. We decided on a blue color for the black diamond pigment. Now in hindsight, I do wish that I added a little bit more pigment to make the blue color just a little bit darker as it's a little bit hard to see underneath the rock. When I pour it onto the boot pan tray, you'll see it looks nice and blue, but when you actually get the rock in there, it darkens it up enough that you can't actually tell the color. All right. 
The pour went smoothly and with no issues, and the Total Boat Epoxy cured very well with only a few bubbles on the side. I actually didn't even go back with a heat gun to pop any bubbles, so I'm quite impressed with the performance. Once we got the epoxy into the tray, I hand added all of the rocks throughout the tray, hoping to get a nice pattern and making sure that I didn't dump them in and splash epoxy everywhere. I did want to make sure that I didn't get too much epoxy over the top of the rock as I wanted it to look like a tray of rocks, not necessarily completely covered in epoxy. In hindsight, I wish I added a little bit less epoxy because as you can see on the left side of the tray there, the epoxy is a little bit high on the rocks compared to the right. And this is simply because the tray filled up with rocks and caused the volume to rise over on the opposite side. And it is time to bring it into the house and I do gotta say, it looks pretty cool there. I hope it is a conversation piece for a long time to come. Well, that is a wrap on the shoe pan build. Definitely some lessons learned, like I mentioned at the beginning. Uh, two of the biggest ones would be, I should put a little bit more pigment in there because you can't actually really tell unless you look closely that, is, that there is blue pigment in there. And then I would also put less epoxy in there so that as I filled it up with rocks, doesn't get so full on the one end like this one did. Now let's talk about this giveaway. Carolina and I are teaming up to give away three pairs of boots to three different winners. First can pick which pair they want, second can pick from the two remaining pairs, and third, you get what you get. But anyway, we are giving away a pair of their brand new S117, which this is a fantastic shoe slash boot almost. I've been wearing this daily to my day job, and it is light enough to be very comfortable, super grippy and actually looks pretty cool and also has toe protection in there so you can wear this into a factory if you need to and then we have my favorite 28s this pair right here i've been wearing for about two years now it is a little bit of a heavy boot but this thing is going to hold up to anything you can throw at it and let's just be clear here i'm not giving away these three pair you'll get a new pair direct from carolina without the love and wear like this. And then the last pair is Carolina's brand new pit stop boot, which is a sweet looking gun stop gray. It has a carbon toe in this bad boy. It's a little bit lighter than the 28s, but definitely heavier than the S117s. Has an oil resistant sole, slip resistant, and overall just a pretty cool looking boot. I've actually never worn these yet but they look pretty awesome. So use the link down in the description below. Enter as many times as you can and tell all of your friends, which will give you a better chance of winning. And in a week's time from when this video is posted, I will post the winner in the comment of this YouTube video. I will post it on YouTube communities and over on Instagram. Good luck everybody. And thanks to Carolina and Tolbo for supporting the channel.